Be the right club. Be the right club today. Yeah! Johnny, that's better than most. How about him? That is better than most. Better than most! Expect anything different? Mm. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the No Laying Up podcast, the No Laying Up live show. Any of those things, all of those things. My name is DJ. We are brought to you by our friends at High Noon, as we always are this glorious evening. It's God, I smelled a grill outside for the first time. Mm. It's in probably six months today, guys. It is a it's a great day to be alive here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Deej, it is the nicest day of the year so far in Denver. What a day to spend 12 hours on the couch inside. <laughs> and listen, if you're gonna be parked on the couch, Randy, or if you're gonna be in front of the grill, I cannot cannot recommend a high noon tequila seltzer enough bring the fiesta anywhere you go with the all-new high noon tequila seltzer fiesta pack this variety eight pack features two new tequila flavors blood orange prickly pear uh, alongside two tequila favorites grapefruit and lime i'm actually opting for neither of those today I'm, i've got passion fruit again mm -hmm. i mentioned this last night the it was the last case of tequila that they had at the whole foods these things are going Quick, Solly, you got to get them when you can. Cannot keep them in stock. We, we can't. We can't. All are made with real tequila and real juice. Perfect for any fiesta, Randy. I know those are the two things you're looking for, for anything to qualify as a fiesta. Find the High Noon Tequila Seltzer Fiesta Pack nearest you at HighNoonSpirits.com. High Noon, Solly. Sun's up. Sun's I want to give a shout out to Jordan as well, who's producing tonight's live show. Uh, she stocked our fridge at the uh, at the Airbnb here in Augusta, uh, full of tequila uh, high noon seltzers, which are hard sometimes hard to find. But that's that was, huge. That was a yeah. nice treat. Jordan, you Big. appear to have gotten us on the air in Cody's absence. Cody is off at a daddy daughter dance. Oh. Uh, I believe two. I believe he's playing two on one uh, tonight <laughs> with his with his twins. So uh, Jordan's got us up and running, which is exciting. I'm sure she'll pop in later on. Guys, uh, another glorious day at the Masters. We've got Scotty, we've got Bryson, we've got freaking Max Homa leading the Masters. Uh, <laughs> just what a, what a time to be alive. Uh, Solly, let, let's let's go to you first. We're going to start uh, just – we might have to go around the circle a couple times to, with the story of the day segment tonight. So let, let's start with you first pick. What do you got? Story of the day. I'm going to steal it. Uh, our buddy Max uh, John Maxwell Homa is tied for the lead at the Masters at the halfway point. He's going to be playing with Bryson tomorrow. Uh, Scotty's going to be in the group ahead. Uh, I got to walk. I got up early, went out there, and followed him and Tiger in for the remaining five holes this morning. It was sublime. It was incredible. Um, you know, again, I, I talked about this yesterday, but I've got a lot, a lot of reverence for this place. I've watched it on television for a long time. Never watched tournament golf here until yesterday was the first day. Today was the second. Be up early watching Tiger come around 15, 16 from a great view. The, the crowds weren't out that early to see it. And just down that little corner of the property, it was uh, with a cup of coffee. It was it was quite a memorable moment, uh, memorable morning. And Max just fits in so well Hold in that did, scene. Did you grab a pin sheet with that coffee? <laughs> I damn it. I thought I had a perfect morning until you just pointed that out. I had no idea where the whole location was. Five steps. Who's you know steps what? are those? That's five, five off steps. the right? Randy, huh. you know what? I didn't huh. need one because it was the same pins as yesterday, and I scouted them all out. Nah. We were totally oh, you fine there on that there one. You go. There you I, go. I, it is just really cool. Um, the friend that we were, you know, drinking beers with at the 2018 Corn Ferry Championship after he missed the cut there, uh, uh, you know, is now, you know, playing with Tiger Woods at the Masters and, and leading halfway through and fitting in really, 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 really ass, well. I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's awesome. It's just so cool. It was an awesome vibe. And he just hit so many grown up shots. I watched uh, a fair amount of their back nine as well today. I watched them go around Amen Corner and he just hit like the shot again. This is well documented. This is all out on television. I, I, they did an awesome job documenting just how windy it was. But again, I just want to add five percent more of emphasis of that's about as windy as I've ever seen a golf course get where they haven't had to call play. It was so windy, so hard to tell where it's actually coming from through the trees. You've heard that about Augusta, but it was just wild to actually feel that out there. 
I don't know how you ever pull the trigger on that shot on 12. It's a total guess. It looks a yard wide when the wind was blowing that hard. He hit the perfect shot shape, just a really grown-up shot. And it just keeps asking that on repeat. We saw some guys wreck their rigs on the way in because it's just really hard to maintain that for 36 holes. And so I, it puts that much – the, the guys that are at the top, puts that in that much more perspective for how many times they pass the test. Bryson included, man. Honestly, even though he shot one over, I'm stealing some storylines here. Max played fucking awesome. It was so fun to watch, and I'm so excited for him going into the weekend. I think what's so cool about, about the Max thing is there's all these players that we have on our short list, right, of like, oh, that like that's a Masters player, right? Yeah. Like, oh, Scotty, I mean, yeah, that's a Masters. Morikawa, that's, yeah, of course, that's a Masters player, iron player, drives it great, hits these great, great distance control. Max is one of those dudes as well. We just haven't seen it yet. And listen, long way to go. We've got a big, big, big 36 holes to go. He is going up against truly the best player in the world, like potentially the best player of his generation. Uh, so listen, long way to go, but we've, we're also a long way into it. And and he has not faltered at all. He's looked like a different player uh, than he has in previous major championships. All kinds of awesome quotes after the round would, yeah. would you know, Randy, please take, take it away. Well, no, I, I'm glad you said that because I, I that, that's what I was going to add. He, he seems to really be trying to stay within himself this this whole week and i think the one quote was about uh he wrote in his journal i'm not going to get it exactly correct but some to the effect of i can only be as good as i am i, I don't need to be better than i am and i, I just want to see how good uh i am right is that good enough and that question will get answered but i can live with that answer i, I don't need to go out and force and press and and try to do things that i'm ultimately not capable of doing and i think with experience and you know max's well-documented struggles in majors like it's just awesome to see him turning the page and and to see such a good mindset this week and and having obvious success through 36 holes it's deej as you said we, we got a long way to go but we're we're in a great spot and uh we got 36 fun holes this weekend <laughs> That's a great question from Sam Zagone. Is that is that the same <laughs> translation as the verse you spit out yesterday? I think that's, fish in the same pond, you know. Yeah, that's one of the gospels. It didn't end up making it into King James. This this is you know this is a different book. But um, no, truthfully, Max, I, I I just love how introspective he can be and and share some of that. I I, I as a viewer and as somebody that you know we're friends with him, but I, I think if I weren't, I would still appreciate his willingness and ability to you know that's not like the most comfortable thing i guess to share um it, it doesn't yeah what's what's in your journal randy <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> what are you so, spit, what are you spitting out every night i just like it. It, it it really humanizes him i agree well, and one other thing too and this is really minor but max has always made himself wide widely available to the media he's been on this podcast a million times he just gives you all kinds of great insight and that's what the game badly 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 needs and for the junkies on the on our Twitter spaces on Tuesday, I, I've mentioned this a couple of times, but he talked about like one specific thing he's learned is like to get over putts when you're expecting a lot of break, trust it. Because when you get over it, your, your instinct is going to be like, I never have to play four, five, six, seven footers this far outside the hole on the PGA Tour. But he's recognized that this is different. And he gets up to a putt outside the hole on the second green this morning and hits it well outside the hole and watches it just fall. It, it fell in the right side on the low side. And that was like an immediate thing of like, dude, he like he said that out loud. And I guarantee you he would have missed that putt low in a prior year. And I'm like, that just gives you so much more context when you're watching him. And uh, I don't know. I just really appreciated that little nugget a lot. I think there's little things. I mean, you know, I, I surely am not the first person to make this take, but uh, first timers at the Masters don't usually do well. And I yeah. think you see that with, you know, the blow pig wrecking his rig. Me and TC's guy, Austin Eckroach, lighting himself on fire. Mm -hmm. He hated to see that as our as our twisted mind parlay <laughs> just went up in smoke. It was close. <laughs> it was it was weirdly close. Yeah, he's he's got a, nice a lot of guys. A lot of nice split. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, listen, hopefully we got a lot more Max to talk about uh, as, as the week goes on. Randy, take us to let's do story of the day number two. What's your second draft pick story of the day i think you know solly touched on it briefly but just the wind in general this afternoon i i, I don't know how i could not pick that number two it, it was legitimately the strongest wind i've seen at augusta i mean i i you guys maybe have watched a little bit more but i can't remember sand blowing out of bunkers like we saw in 18 um 
We saw what was it? Gary Woodland's ball on 16 rolled. Uh, just just some of the trees right in the background as guys are in the fairway. There was one. Oh God, I don't know what hole it was, but like like those. Tr- it was just crazy. Like it was legitimate, legitimate win. Solly, I, I would oh love God. to hear your perspective actually being out there. Um, but I, I it it was. It was a difficult test. It was a stern test. It's, it's you know, ironically, kind of everything I've ever hoped for out of, like, all our, all our U.S. Opens. Um, but we got to see kind of who held it together, who managed it, and on the flip side, who could not handle it. And I think that was ultimately Deej to, to the point of this exercise. That, that was the biggest story of the afternoon, in my opinion. Well, the thing maybe I love about Augusta and the Masters the most is it just requires different shot making and different artistry just from the jump, right? The lies, the elevation changes, the shot shapes you need. You can't hit the same stock shot all over on repeat and and get through unless you're playing the 2020 Masters in November like DJ was. You got you to gotta have some artistry, right? And then you add in this element and, dude, it was – and we can get into this a little later. Like watching Rory and Scotty handle the win differently was just like, I mean, there it is. That's it right there. That's the question being asked. It is not. It is not like uh, launch monitor golf out there, right? It is feeling your way around these shots. It's the kind of stuff we used to watch Spieth do really, really well, and he doesn't really do well anymore. Unfortunately, we can talk about that later. But it's a totally, totally different question when you stand on some of these tees. When you stand on twelve tee, when you stand, you know, even that watching guys trying to flight shots into the back part of fifteen from sixty-five yards was super interesting. Watching guys chip up into the back shelf on thirteen uh, after laying up was super interesting. And just I, I don't know if we turn this into Rory now, but watching him fail that test on repeat was just like, yeah, dude, like that's it, like that's it right there. If you wonder, wonder if you ever wonder why you haven't won this thing, like watch the tape back today. I, I think that's exactly right. Sorry, Deej. I just to jump in, it, it, we could not have asked for a better juxtaposition between Rory and Scotty playing side by side, and just who was able to control their ball and their trajectory, and who really wasn't. Scotty, like, I, I wish I had like Randy. I, you said this all the time. I wish I had better words to describe it. Like Scotty, like, still makes it look easy, and it, it like the best way I was trying to like describe it was like he. It's like no matter what the the weather is. Like he he's he knows exactly when he needs to hit it to 30 feet left of the hole, right? And the difference is like he can just keep doing that as the difficulty keeps ramping up. So like when there's no conditions, he's like, Oh yeah, just hit it 30 feet left of the hole. Like, yeah, no problem. There's a lot of guys that can do that, right? But like as it just keeps getting harder and harder and harder, like Scotty st- it's not like he stuffed it a million times today, you know. He just like was out, outside of 13, which he said he got gusted on, and I believe him because he hasn't missed a freaking shot all all week. <laughs> is like i mean he just doesn't like he doesn't make mistakes he still makes all those like look really easy the one that stuck out to me i think we'll probably talk about it later in another segment is like the one on three i was watching with justine and oh my god that he, shot thank you probably doesn't care at all but i'm like oh my god this is so freaking hard he's got to get it out of this bunker and it's going to spin more because it's coming out of the bunker and it's a long shot he's got to get it up high it's straight into the wind massive false front which sahith like does the exactly. same exact thing rips it off the front hits like stubs three chips makes a triple and scotty just like takes a little longer club hits it takes all the spin off throws it out there to 10 feet sucks it back five feet whereas like saw it whipped it back i don't know 50 feet and she's like dude that's it like that's it like that's that's the guy i'm so glad you said that because it's out there it, it, one slip up, go watch yeah. Sahith play the third hole and go watch Scotty play the third hole. And then go watch Rory shot as well. He's in the right rough after an inaccurate tee shot and like didn't get the, the distance right on landing it and could not spin it and hold the, the front part of the green goes all the way to the back. Scotty missed the birdie putt, but it was, he turned bogey into a birdie chance immediately. And it's just, it is so unfair to miss where he did on nine. Like he ripped it off the front of the green. He made the mistake. Like he made some mistakes today and just chips it right up and makes the putt. Like when he's making these eight footers, it is night night. I, I still think it's night night. I think he's still going to win. Um, and he, he, this was probably his bad round today. I, I thought, uh, I never realized like how good of a chipper Scotty is. Oh. I, I think today's round just cemented. You know, I, you can read the the stats on the website, but it, it it didn't crystallize, I guess, for me until watching today. Solly, the the shot on nine, perfect example. He he just. 
you know, we, we, we spend a lot of time talking about his putting, but man, when, when you're able to chip the ball consistently that close, it, it's such a freaking weapon, especially on a day like today. Randy, it's so good to have you on the on the right side of history, my man. You should have you should have worn an eye patch today. I'm gouging that my eyes. Been, <laughs> that would have been, that been good. All Scotty, right, uh, second in strokes gained around the green so far this week. Again, on top of being the best tee, to, he's not the best tee to green so far yeah. this week. But he's, uh, or I'm sorry, not the best ball striking so far. He's number one tee to green, uh, not the best with just uh, just off the tee and with approach. But when you combine uh, around the green, he's number one. You know what's cool about being the best chipper too is like when you don't ever miss greens. <laughs> as well. It's on. It's legit. Like, oh no! But if I do, like I'm also I'm also the best chipper. Yeah. So that's yeah. so that's rad as well. Uh, all right. So with the, with the third pick in the in the Friday 2024 Masters Story of the Day draft, I'm gonna do it. We, we could talk more about Scotty. Well, I have a feeling we're gonna be talking about Scotty all week. Uh, I, I did a little soul searching. I didn't give enough due to Tiger yesterday. And, uh, you know, I felt a little bad about that. I thought today we were we were in for a letdown trap game. Like, hey, we've seen this. Yes, of course, he can shape the shots. Of course, his distance, distance control is great. I thought we might see him kind of like falter a little bit, make the cut on the number, and then maybe WD this weekend, as we've seen many, many times. Uh, but we didn't. He played freaking awesome, man. And and he he just like looks solid, and it just can't be said enough times how solid he is and a, a heartfelt congratulations i think when we do look back at like this day in masters history it's going to be tiger setting the record for 24 consecutive made cuts breaking the record of i think fred couples and mr gary player and and sorry just speaking of like just the dirtiest short game right i, I think tiger hit eight greens today but <laughs> just constantly i i remember that that little pitch he hit uh on 11 navigating the bunker and and the ridge and getting that close he he just for a guy that well i i shouldn't say for a guy that doesn't have many reps it, it seems like maybe he's spending all his time probably just hitting chips and and putting but to to see that touch that consistent touch around these greens today was <laughs> super impressive you know what i would say for, free idea for the uh you know for the marketers out there i would assume this would be a tailor-made activation we did that spieth and jt uh short game video with titleist this week that's up on up on the titleist youtube channel somebody's got to do one of those with scotty and tiger like dude just just sell like five thousand tickets just have a bunch of people drinking beers, circling a green, and then you just gotta watch. Like, just watch these guys get up and down from everywhere. I would, yeah. I, I can't tell you what a what a ticket I would pay for that. Mic them up and just like put them in the most fucked up spots you could find and just watch watch these guys get up and down from everywhere. That's all. It's all I want to watch. That's that's golf, man. I hope he rests up good tonight. I mean, it it was the fe the exact fear we all had as soon as we saw the forecast was like, oh shit, he's not going to finish this Thursday round and he's going to get up early on Friday. He's going to have to play a bunch of holes. It probably helped that he had to go back out relatively quickly instead of breaking between, but he did not look great this morning. The walk was not as good. He could not get himself fully stretched out. It didn't look like when he was playing the 15th hole and he just made it work, dude. He just made it work. Like he just reminds me of that like 55 year old guy you play with in pickup basketball that just like camps out at the elbow and just gets the ball and you know is is pivoting all over the place making no look passes just like just all these faster guys way around him but he just sees the floor way better he's he's angling himself for all the rebounds he's just waiting for the ball to bounce his way and it just keeps going his way it's just it's an artist at work it's just awesome to watch that the the pitching wedge into three from 87 yards just making that look as easy as possible like he played 25 tournaments so far this year that was a, a huge highlight of the day can i uh randy i think you're gonna like this one this is this is late breaking across the wire from from tc mm. i just glanced at our, our slack <laughs> what's my guy tc gotta He's, say he said quote a listener sent this over and it's brilliant this is this is from an unnamed listener of the no laying it up podcast borrowing the genesis of this idea from the big guy instead of taking cards from the people behind the cat <laughs> What if the cat is the cut line? If you can't beat someone who's more <laughs> fused than not, then you don't deserve to play the weekend. That's one of the best ideas I've That's ever inspired heard. Inspired idea. I wholly subscribe. I wholly who, subscribe. Who so they send anyone, him home? Anyone? Yeah, anyone who is behind him on the cut line. Not not only are we like not dignifying them with whether they have a, a chance to win or not. In my mind, they're not even in the tournament. Hatton, Hatton Brooks, Kepka. Little Corey, Corey Connors, Connors can't no Willie, Pat. Willie Z, Noah Pat, Sahith, Mickelson, Neiman, the Neiman. best player in the world. 
Min Woo Lee, the chef. Get off Instagram. Rory, You're out of Rory here. Rory could have picked up three hours ago. He's, <laughs> yeah. He's gone. Big Rom spitting the bit today with a little 78. Rom. Yeah, I think oh, that's I think that's a that's great outstanding take. Can you imagine that? Like getting into some of these majors, just like, oh, we have it's gonna be a 17 man field this weekend. This is all it's all that we got left. I think it's that's, like it I reminds me of the good. Olympic uh like track or, or swim meets, you know, where they have like the world record line in the pool with them <laughs> yeah. as, yes. as they're swimming or running. Like that should be the cat out on the course. Like you're either behind the cat or you're in front of the cat. You either get to keep playing or we're gonna have to ask you to go home. That's a great uh, idea. All right, I think we still got a couple more players on the board here. Anybody, anybody st still want to draft? Solly, back to the top of the order. I just, I mean, I can go quickly on this one, but want to shout out Bryson's round. It was one over par seventy three, but I mean, I was selling stock last night, but I, I, I'm, you know, I might like buy back a little bit of what I sold today. I mean, it was, this was a, that was a big test today. I thought he would falter harder in that condition. I mean, it just, he's never really played this golf course well, and you add in that many elements to it, and I would have thought today would have been a perfect day for him to go backwards, and he didn't really do it. So, lipped out a couple putts in the back nine that could have easily been a one under par round. There's only two guys, Max and Colin, that have shot uh, under par both rounds, and Bryson was very close to doing that. And uh, so, I just want to shout that out. This feels like more sustainable than maybe I gave credit to uh, as of last night. Still a long way to go. Still a sure. long way to go. Um, I still like Scotty's chances um, against him, but um, I, you know, I was I was selling on him top fiving, and I'm, I may I may live to regret that one. We'll see. He, Randall, I, yeah, I, well, just real quick on Bryson, I imagine he putted the ball really well today. I that's I was impressed with his putting. Uh, I thought he had a very shaky start to the day. His his course management on number two left a lot to be desired. He he bogeyed four. Uh, I thought Solly, I oh this could get away quickly, but. Yeah, he he righted the ship, and I thought he yeah. played really good golf coming in. The the bogey on eighteen was unfortunate, uh, but like you said, he easily could have been a couple shots better with with those uh, lip outs going in. So, and we're gonna get to this, but he also did all of this whilst being an absolute content factor as well, <laughs> right? And right, that's uprooting the sign exactly enough about. Uh, yeah. Randy, quick quick picks. We'll wrap we'll wrap up this segment. Anything else you want to draft, or you can go with an empty roster spot. Well, I think a guy that I totally wrote off and disowned yesterday, I mean, Colin Morikawa uh, <laughs> somehow shows up. He's three under. I'm I'm allegedly. He's I'm running out he's, of eyes to gouge out. Yeah, he's tied for fifth. I just don't quite understand it. Um, but having a two-time major winner there is like, oh, yeah, Colin. <laughs> nice of you to be here. I don't trust it. I wish I did. I don't trust it. Um but it, but if things kind of mellow out this weekend, DG you said at the top of the show, like he's he's somebody that we always ticket for this place. He's he's definitely right in it, and I did not see that at all. I will uh, I will echo all of that. That's I think my idea. my last pick. I'm kind of I'm, I'm right between two guys. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna shout out the defending champion John Ram, uh, who <laughs> looked like he was gonna be packing his knives and going home. And instead, showed <laughs> tussled the hair. That, that's a that's a tough one to watch for. I don't know who tri who who said that. Tron, what Neil, that? Neil or Tron? Yeah, you, you yeah, can't always see it. Every, the big tussle with the hair, and then goes right, right in for before the hair. he shakes your hand. It's like, ah, oh, I don't need the <laughs> sweat and grease, dude. <laughs> uh, the uh, you know, there's a lot of guys that like get it going that wrong direction and truly just pack it in and you know never to be heard from again rom i at least thought showed some good fight today so it, it while it massively sucks uh that he's not more of a factor in the tournament and that he's what 11 shots back right now and clearly not actually in the tournament because he finished behind tiger uh <laughs> he you know I, I i thought still showed some metal and still didn't didn't wilter into a, a little boy as many of his peers may have done this didn't fully register for me yesterday i should have said this last night on the show but when he had his espn interview after the round he was like he came in and was like yeah i mean i was expecting you know there's always somebody that goes low but i'm really surprised at how low the scores were it was kind of like yeah, man, I don't know if I'd if I'd say that. Like after you left the strongest tour for the live tour, if like you're surprised at how good the competition is doing uh in the first major of the year. I don't I might have just left that one uh aside. That you know, I don't know if that's if I'm reaching for that for that link, but I just I probably wouldn't have said that. 
All right. Well, let's uh, let's move on. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for for I, th I think we got really good balanced teams there going into the season. Of course. Uh, <laughs> before we move on to our next segment, I want to shout out our, our next sponsor. That is Mizuho. Randy, I believe these guys are supporting the hell out of your your LPGA podcast efforts, which is very exciting. You may be asking yourself who or what is Mizuho. They are a top global corporate and investment bank, an absolute powerhouse. In Japan, I see somebody who just popped into the into the green room who's also a powerhouse in Japan. Uh, the Americas is their fastest growing region for Mizuho globally. Uh, and as part of that, they're making a big splash in the world of women's golf. If you're an avid avid golf watcher, you may have seen a few of their commercials featuring our friend Michelle Wee West, uh, their title sponsor of the Mizuho Americas Open. Uh, Randy, I know you, you know about this one. Awesome event out at Liberty National. Wasn't that uh, the, the one our girl Rose won last year? It was. It was. LPGA debut last year. So that is, uh, th that's an, you know, I would encourage people to tune into that one. The amateurs playing with the pros increased purse, $3 million purse, which is a big deal on the, uh, on the women's side. They cover all the player accommodations. Uh, they have a full day leadership summit for young girls. Uh, that is all on Mizuho's back. So, uh, while you may not know the name quite yet, you likely know many of the name brand companies they have helped and projects they have funded, uh, and events they support. So thank you to Mizuho for more information please visit MizuhoAmericas.com. Guys, this was not on the agenda. We have someone We have someone here who I clearly has something to get off their chest. Please, uh, Mr. TC, the, the floor is yours. <laughs> Hello, gentlemen. Uh, good to be here with you. Uh, I'd just like to say uh, there was one guy that shot in the 60s today, and you guys just mm. he wasn't, wasn't one of your picks, wasn't one of your stories today, and uh, don't know what that's about. So – uh you know not cool uh ludwig abergs uh three under 69 in the second round of the masters beat the field average by 6.079 strokes That's take that data boys and with that i'm gonna get back to the grill got you guys up on the screen here <laughs> See you thank you tc that thank was you tc that was gonna be you know what that was gonna be the centerpiece of our next segment you didn't let me Come finish on, TC. TC. we were just about to get to it uh, we're going to go down the leaderboard a little bit. And of course, of course, we're going to start with Ludwig Ober. And, you know, TZ took the words out of my mouth there. 69 in his, you know, it's already his second second major round of his career. So I, I think we're just kind of used to seeing it by now. Well, probably. much like the tee times for the early rounds, like you separate out the biggest, you know, draw in there. We can't do all the biggest draws right in the beginning. Right. You got to separate People out. People would have left you know? the show. Right, exactly. This number keeps going up. It's number going uh, up technology, just like Bitcoin. <laughs> That's right. Well, a couple other guys. Uh, we, we also skipped over Cam Davis. I had no idea where, where TC was going to catch us with our pants down there. We skipped over uh, Nikolai Hoygaard as well. We skipped over Cam Davis. Both, Look, of, both of his boys, I know. But you know, we'll get to them in lingering and loitering later if on. If they're there at the end of the day tomorrow, that will be probably one of the biggest stories, right? Respectfully. I, I think that's right. I will also shout out uh, down at one under Tom Fleetwood. In red numbers, you know what you got it. You, you do in fact got to hand it to him. Not TC. to TC. He abandoned his boy this week. He abandoned him. You got to hand it to Tommy though, for sure. Maybe that's why he's playing better. He's he's freed up a little bit. We got Cam, Cam Young. Which, yeah, please. Yeah. No, I was just gonna say. I know we have a segment coming. Can't wait to see where our our guest uh, how he talks about Tom Fleetwood in a later segment. Uh, real quick, just just on Ludwig Ludwig. I, I, I'm over the pronunciation it's stuff his already. It's his fault. Uh, guys, he, he really looks the part like, like he, he, he looks just unflappable. Um, you know, that elegant long iron he hit into 13. He, he just, man, he looks like he belongs. It, it was impressive stuff. TC. I see you. I'm, I'm, I'm still riding for our guy. Uh, we've got Matthew Pavon. Randy, did you do your French today? You got your street going oui. still? We, we, we. Also at one under, as well as Trey Cam Bien Young. Man. Yeah, Trey Bien. <laughs> Boku birdies. Uh, he had, uh, Cam Young at one under. Dan Willett back to one under after an untimely God. triple on the uh, on the 18th. Foxy one under. Ben on one under. And Cam Smith one under. That will conclude your under par players. Solly, I know you wanted to shout out a little in memoriam segment. Uh, those we lost. A little miscut. I, I think we got to start with with JT. That honestly was going to be my story of the day if I didn't go with Rob. Just really unlucky finish. Uh, the wind really picked <laughs> up on him as as he played the last four holes. He, uh, I, he I would was, implore people. You have to almost. You could shut off the podcast if you want. Yeah. You have to go watch his layup on fifteenth. Was like truly something I would I would have done. 
God, he got it, early called by like the whole gallery. It was so good. <laughs> he uh, he was as he was closer to the lead than he was the cut line. Playing his second shot into fifteen, uh, laid it up into the water, made double, flipped over, uh, hit it in the right bunker on sixteen, hit it on the green and three putted, bogeyed seventeen, snap hooks it into the trees over by the 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 phone lines where I've been calling in voicemails uh, next behind seventeen or behind eight T, off the eighteenth T has to punch out backwards, doubles eighteen to move the cut line himself. And miss it by one. He had a putt to to make bogey to make the cut, but he moved the cut line and fell outside the cut. It was, uh, I mean, he collapsed last year at the end of uh, Friday to miss the cut by one as well. And this was 85 times worse. I just, I cannot imagine how, what he's feeling right now. No, he was playing some good golf. Like, honestly, wasn't expecting a whole lot from him this week. And uh, was, I mean, right there in the mix, I think around even par. What was he? Uh, yeah, even par with four holes to play. And that was is sitting T15 right now, and then he ejecto seat cuz and missed the cut. Unreal. Yeah, was I, he I, playing? I, uh, sorry, was he playing with Vic and Hideki? Uh, no, Vic, or was that a different group? group. Was, okay, was all right, yeah. disregard. Deej, what were you gonna say? Sorry, no, I've just never quite I haven't seen anything like that. Uh, that shot on 15 he was he was like kind of way up on those left trees uh you know the trees that kind of force you to lay up on 15 left of the fairway and hit this monster monster snap hook clearly was not going for the green like was was clearly trying to just like lay up to a number and hit this like you know just flush rope hook that just ran i mean i don't want to say unlucky it's like i don't it's it's i don't know 80 feet downhill like of course it's going to just keep rolling and rolling and rolling but uh just rolls all the way down to the water just a truly jarring jarring shot uh and then yeah to make double on 16 after that is is no boing uh anyone else miss the cuts all you want to you want to give their time i mean yeah we had the blow pig miss the cut by one um nick dunlap had a great fight to get back on the cut line but i'm, I'm gonna need him to get that putt on the 18th green to the hole potentially to have made the cut uh he missed by one uh victor hovland shot an 81 today he missed a six inch putt on 15 as he went to go tap it in he is uh in the wilderness officially located in the wilderness uh we'll probably have a lot more to say about that uh in coming weeks and months dustin johnson uncompetitive 78 79 cannot have that absolutely cannot have that looks to dustin, just be dustin loki kind of feels like the first uh i don't know maybe, casualty well just the first like superstar like former like superman of my generation that i'm like ah man i think i think he might just be too old now like i think it's just over he's not he's only 39 like he, sh he it shouldn't be over yeah is he shouldn't too be, old or like, too disinterested but it, maybe that's one and the same i guess but yeah, yeah I, I i don't mean that quite as literally as it probably sounded i just more mean like ah, yeah i think it's i think it's over i mean it he literally said it in full swing that he hasn't worked hard enough. Like he's just been kind of mailing it in. Like this is not a reach, right? This is not uh, for the bots that are going to pick this up. Like no, this is this is a real thing. It's just so disappointing. I I would have built him as the one dude that left in the early wave. That's like no, he's still going to show up at majors. Like he's still that talented, and he's just not it anymore. It's he, it's kind of toast. He kind of looks like me in my first year of engineering school right now. Where like coming out of high school, I'm just like. Oh. Like I don't have to study for tests. Like I'm the kid. I'll just free. Wheel. Oh my god. Well, I got a what? What did I get in the first math class? Like oh shit. Huh? This huh? is a, oh this. We got to come up with another plan. This is not. This is not gonna work. I'm gonna get this golf podcasting thing off the ground. Reports that Rory's on the range currently at a uh, eight forty three. Darkness was almost an hour ago. Um, that's gonna I like put to me see that bad, fight in him. It's gonna put me in a bad mood. I don't know. I don't really want to talk about the Rory thing. I think going back to Victor, I, I again just for your for your homework, I would implore everybody to go uh watch his hole by hole on number two and fifteen. And fifteen, just <laughs> some like head scratchy, head scratchy stuff. A lot of that you kind of touched on it, but like a lot of a lot of the reports coming out of the uh coming out of the grounds are like, man, Vic is searching, 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 which was he, you know. And he goes out and shoots 71 yesterday in tough conditions, which I was texting some buddies. I'm like, this is why like golf gambling is so ridiculous. Like, you know, you, you think you got some note and like these guys just, you know, they all summon something. It's so unpredictable. And then the, the 81 was a little bit more kind of what in line with some of the things I think everybody's hearing. He, he looked like he had seen ghosts on multiple yeah. occasions. Yeah. Very, very strange. 
Did we That's, mention Spieth? Did you mention Spieth? No, let's let's sit on that one. We've got we've got a a, a big right hander that's coming in that I think is going to give us a couple good innings on Spieth in a little that's bit right. here. That's right. We're uh, on a pitch count. That's right. Uh, Saul, anything else on the uh, on the leaderboard, or you want to keep moving? Well, I, we, I think we can keep moving a little bit, but just ZJ will have his own section. He missed the cut uh, by one as well, but I think we're have a separate section of the show for that one. Uh, unlucky. Uh, all right, this was something I put I put together this morning. I wanted you guys to you know put together like what what you think are the most important shots of the day when you when you sit back and you Randy you're getting into your notebook you're getting into your journal mm. and you're you're like you're trying to synthesize some big ideas where did the uh you know where did where did the big big moments happen what were the most important shots of the day Randy I'll, I'll give you the first pick you want me okay um I I settled around our three leaders, so just to tip my hand. But let me let me pick out Scotty, and we we've touched on it, but it is what I circled when he missed that wedge into nine. Um, I thought that was a big moment. Whether he can get that up and down, um, obviously the conditions are are very fresh at that point. And I thought that the chip was good, but he, he left himself a little slider putt for par on number nine. And, and I just thought that was a very important putt to kind of keep him in it, right? He had he had bogeyed seven. Uh, he had bogeyed five. He had bogeyed seven. If, if he misses that putt and he bogeys nine, all of a sudden, you know, we're, we're, we're three bogeys in a, without any birdies. Um, but I thought that made putt you know my my conjecture here but i i think it played a part into then he he hit a beautiful drive off 10 he he stuffed his approach and birdied 10 and all of a sudden he's back at seven under for the tournament and you know kind of under control i i thought that was a pivotal moment off of a very uncharacteristic you know he, he couldn't really flight that wedge into nine couldn't control a spin but was able to get up and down and i i for scotty i thought that was the most important shot today can I pick up mine Please. right with the next moment with Randy, which is the shot into 11? I mean, it was yeah. that shot was so hard. I'm pretty sure I'd like to hear Max's comment on his like he just like laid up short right. I think there was kind of no point in taking it on. Go back and watch that shot on the hole by hole if you need to. If you if you missed it today, he hits this low flighty draw in there that was never going in the water. It was never going to go too far left. It was the shot that was requested and asked for and needed, and he did it right onto the back fringe. Easy two-putt par from there. That hole that was playing so difficult in the afternoon. Rory steps up from closer, throws it way higher up in the air, and acts surprised when the wind takes it and puts it in the water. Like Again, just that's the whole thing. It was right there. Scotty answered the bell on that shot. Um, listen, on 13, it didn't quite work out the same when he kind of tried to do something very similar, but man, he just has that gear, and on a day when it could have gone, you know, could have gone like it did for Rory. That was the shot that stuck out the most to me. And believe it or not, the wind was still blowing when Rory got to 13. He was also befuddled about that. Couldn't believe it. His, his, his wind got hit. His drive got hit by the wind off the tee. Uh, okay. Yeah. Bummer, bummer day. For And people are making fun of Randy for calling that out as a big storyline today. Like, I, yeah, Rory <laughs> yeah. didn't know the wind was a big storyline. <laughs> exactly, right? Uh, all right, I'm going to go in a different direction, although I do have some Scotty ones on my list. I'm going to go with uh, the pros shot into number four. The seven wood, everybody else, you know, Scotty and Bryson and uh, Xander and a lot of these guys are kind of playing out to that short left, leave themselves an easy chip at this par three that's playing like, what, 350 yards today, basically, uh, yeah. just to, directly into the teeth of the wind. And Max just like saws off a seven wood right into the middle of the green, leaves himself like 30 feet. Truly unbelievable, unbelievable golf shot. One of the best shots I saw all day. And I think that was like the... the so good. You know, you try not to draw too much out of one shot, but also I guess that's kind of what this segment's all about. Uh, but I was like, that that dude's like up for the fight, man. He's yep. like him and Joe are in their book. They see what the wind is doing. They're reacting to stuff. They're not trying to force their game plan. And that was a, a moment of of just beauty and artistry and science all mixed together. And then he gets rewarded by just cashing the putt. And I mean, yeah. it's like total luck that that putt goes in. But like, you know, it's definitely not going in if you're, you know, 150 feet off the green so it's like just just awesome stuff one of my favorite things going in golf right now is uh, one of the things that makes me feel the best is when i hear joe hit us with the great swing dude 
great swing, dude. Like I, I just Joe uh, gets gets him so amped up, and he's so aware of like what a really good shot is. He said it to him when uh, yesterday on the when he hit the shot into twelve that stayed up on the bank. Like he hit a good shot. Like he made a good swing. It just they they maybe hit the wrong shot or whatever it was. But I just love when he hits the great swing, dude. Uh, I'm gonna snake back. You know what? Snaking. Okay. Yeah, we're snaking. We're snaking. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back my way. Uh, I'm gonna say this is just important. You know, it didn't end up being a massive, massive factor on today. Like he still putted pretty good. He still obviously got himself into the last group for tomorrow. But I can't unsee some of Bryson's short downhill putts. The one on four, the one on six were like, again, that like legitimately looked like me trying to, to guess the wind. Like it it was, it was so tentative. It was so scared. And it was like the best indicator, I think of just how hard the golf course was playing, but it's also like a, uh, I don't know. It's just to watch this space for later on. I think that that, those could not have inspired a lot of confidence. We talk about what an average hack would have done today, like in those conditions from playing from the tips. Well, Bryson's putt on four would have been exactly (laughs) what any chop would have looked like putting. It it was incredible. It was incredible. DJ, oh, I guess we're snaking. Sorry, Sol, your your pick. I I was going to say, I have Bryson. It's a weird one. Um, Kind of like you, Deej. I'm not sure, like, if it's the most important ra- shot he hit today, but I think it portends well for his weekend. And that was his decision and his execution in the layup on 15. I, I thought, I, I thought he was making some weird course management decisions throughout the day, early in the round, especially. Um, the way he played 13 was crazy. I know he ended up making birdie, uh, but he gets to 15, and I think there's a world where Bryson just tries to muscle that to the green and, and, you know, he, he goes for it and who knows what happens, but I thought it showed really good restraint and maturity in that moment to lay up to where he did. Uh, he, he had an excellent chip shot. His, his birdie putt lipped out. Uh, he ended up making par, but I, I just, I finally saw him like make a very smart calculated decision. And I, again, I, I think that portends well to, to Saturday and Sunday. So all we got last one. I'll go again. This is from this morning. I made my way up to the bleachers behind 17. Um, again, the wind's already whipping a little bit. And Max hits a wedge down there. Downwind. I think we have a voicemail for this. Oh, one. I think we do. I think there was a live on the ground report from this one. If we yeah, Jordan, to can we fire up the hot news graphic? There it is. Oh, uh, <laughs> let, let's, let's get our first voicemail of the day. You would not believe the scenes here from the front line. Max Homa playing a wedge into the 17th green. Hits it up there three inches from the hole. The crowd out here thinks he's got what it takes to go all the way. Get the ticker tape ready. Crack on. <laughs> that was good. You were, you were too polished today. It was more fun when you were stumbling and messing up. As soon as I hung that up, there were like three people that were right there. I was like, oh, was that a voicemail? Was that a voicemail? What was it? What was it? <laughs> Uh, what a yeah, what a shot! It was funny watching him uh, in his post round too, being like, "Ooh, yeah, I was, I was, I want to see this one on TV." I was, I was wondering how close this one went. I don't know how this one didn't go in. Uh, uh, I'll you want anything else? I was gonna Sorry. say that was that was from the morning round. I again followed him again in the afternoon, and it was just a fucking awesome scene down there. 11, 12, what with Tiger and Max, a maximum amount of people you could have down there. Uh, Max pulling off some awesome shots in that that stretch of the property and. Just the crowd noise and the energy around Max was really interesting. Obviously, people are rooting for Tiger, but when Max got up to 12T, that just the energy kind of flowed a little bit, and it just seemed like he he had some uh, some control of the crowd. I'm not saying he was stealing away from Tiger, but they were just kind of uh, simultaneously rooting him on. I think I, I think we have another voicemail to kind of uh, to illustrate a little bit of that. <clears throat> Breaking news from the front line: Max Homa has flipped the script. The patrons came to the zoo to see a tiger, and now they're chanting for the pro. What a buzz! Max, we thank you for all you do online. <laughs> <laughs> that's good stuff yeah i'm surprised max didn't get any of those calls out there thank you for everything you do online sir you know solly those are legitimately great are, are, <laughs> are you scripting those or is that just off the top of your head uh it, i just kind of winged it last yesterday i was not uh you know i was i was uh wildly wildly effective um uh as you if to use a bullpen term um, I we have to we do have to acknowledge I'm stealing that bit completely from Scoops Callahan from the ticket well, uh, sure. the 1920s bit. Of course, if you're not aware, this is not an original bit, but uh, that was uh, those are my reports from on the on the front lines today. 
All right, last last one I've got uh, for me, and then Solly. I think we're gonna speaking of the bullpen. I think we're gonna we're gonna tap you out for a sec. We're gonna bring in our guy KVV. But let me go now. I'll swap out right now. Sure, that's All perfect. Right. I am. Uh, I'm just gonna shout out Rory's kind of poofy opening tee shot on number one. I mean, Scotty steps up, just kind of hammers one up the left side, just exactly where you want to be. And Rory just kind of hits that like we the same one we saw him kind of hit in that Patrick Reed year you know just like kind of poofy out to the right into that bunker yeah. and i think he you know kind of salvaged it around but it was just it, it the feeling was kind of like ah man this isn't this isn't happening this he, that's not today's not the day he's got like let me ask you this dj rory do you think rory knows that scotty's like got more shots than him like is better than him and and how must that affect you right <laughs> That's that's a bit yeah. I would like to read Rory's journal maybe tonight. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that would, be, that would be interesting. Let me. I would bring in KVV for that question. He seems like the kind of the guy that would would have a, a decent answer to uh, to something like that. Kev, you think you think Rory knows that Scotty's better than him? Uh deep down, yeah, I do. <laughs> I think he he think he sits up at night with a glass of wine and thinks, uh, oh man, like it's it life has come at me pretty fast. <laughs> it's. It's a different world than uh, when he was the man. Like it's on full display today. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't mean to like. It's a, it's a fascinating psychological question, right? Like how you go about competing against somebody when deep down you're like, eh, this guy's got more shots. Like he's he's better than I. <laughs> I just can't hit the kind of like low flighted. I, I mean, I saw he touched on this, but it just over and over you see it out there. He just can't control the trajectory that his irons are coming in in into greens like Scotty can. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's not a very fun conversation. Sorry, dude. I didn't mean to oh, it's, the oh, be the important. cooler to come in here and <laughs> yeah. be, be William H. Macy and be like, anyway, oh. base is yeah. loaded. Good yeah. luck with yeah. that. Just like uplifting yeah. topics. Can you can talk about whatever you want? What did you write about today? Uh, I followed our beautiful boy Jordan Spieth, and uh, <laughs> Ooh, I thought, no, no, wait, no. I thought, you know what? This would be a great uh, thing. He's going to make a run, or he's going to completely, uh, you know implode and of course the latter happened and uh i was uh, got to see the the shit show on 15 i got to see uh you know him wanting to throw a club later in the round him just weaving his way through the patrons and and looking almost unrecognizable which ended up being the lead of my story it's a tough scene out there uh dj and i i don't know what i i, I was really kind of conscious of hey don't write anybody's obit uh, out there. Uh, all respect to you, Big. You're really the, the authority on that kind of thing. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I did not love what I saw out there. Oh, I, I don't. Yeah, yeah I don't I, know how you could like anything about what you saw. A lot of a lot of directions we can go. I would encourage everybody. I believe it's already up on on NoLangup.com. KVV's piece. Shout out to Jordan. Jordan's doing everything tonight. She's got oh. stories up early. It's it's great. We're humming. Uh, I don't know, man. There was some some of the clothes I was watching this morning at the coffee shop with uh, with our good friend Dom Catronio. And, you know, we, we got Jordan waiting there on 18. I think somebody was like kind of futzing around or getting a read or something. And just the way they lingered on his face for just way too long as he's kind of sitting there, he just looks dead behind the eyes. Uh, is our boy broken? KVV, what's what's going on? <sighs> I think there's a little bit of brokenness in there. I'll tell you, DJ, an even more haunting scene, uh, you know, late, uh, I guess it was early in this in second round, but it's kind of midway through the day. He hit it, hit it way down there left of the Delta counter where, uh, you know, I, I know, I know, well, I was going to say we're, we're changing it to the Hertz counter, but you know, I think before he arrived to pay tribute to Mr. TC and, and officially christened it, the Hertz counter, it was still the Delta counter that when he's down there, the Hertz people offered him a lifetime gold membership, uh, said that he could oh, just walk his car from now on. Yeah. And he wasn't quite ready to take it. You know, they were, oh, we don't need to see your ID. We yeah, know you. you're, you're here impressed. every week. You're always they're impressed that he's a yeah. safe driver. They took the pledge, agreed not to text <laughs> all those years. So, but he, he wasn't quite ready to accept lifetime membership down there. He sat down in the fairway deed while he was kind of waiting for the, the green to clear, put his, his elbows kind of on his knees. And Greller just kind of standing there awkwardly, like looking off into the distance, like the both of them have like done a tour somewhere in a foreign country. Yeah. And it, it was it was a tough thing. I mean, they must have sat there for a good three minutes before uh, they they really sort of got up to hit the shot. And then he made a birdie out of there. But it was like it's kind of the, the weird bleakness of like, oh, you, you're you're nine over and you made a birdie just to sort of you're, just keep your heart beaten. Uh, yeah, I'd say there's a little bit of brokenness. But I will say, look. I think some of it is obviously injury related. Uh, there's something going on with his wrist. He talked a lot about it actually early in his presser this year, uh, sort of this week, 
uh, said basically, you know, it's it's the same issue that he had last year. It's not quite as bad as it was uh, last year where he felt like he had to take weeks off at a time. It's only it'll flare up for a day. Uh, but then he, it, he, you know, he's, he's just feels like it's, he's wincing out there. He's constantly kind of shaking his wrist a little bit when the things are bad, really looked like he wanted to throw a club uh, on five after he came well short with a, with an iron approach. Uh, it's, it's not great. What was like the, what's the biggest culprit? Is it the, is it driver? Is it the irons? Is it the putter? Is it everything? What's I, dude, lately it feels to... today out there in that stuff. It felt like wedge game. So like on 15, I don't know if people saw, you, you can, if you're a true psycho, you can go and watch it. But he, you know, he has a third shot into 15 in the morning. He's only plus two at this moment. He's got a wedge in there. If you can make a birdie, you know, you're a plus one. You're kind of actually would have been in the tournament. Mary Mail's a wedge a little bit long. He's got a chip that he, you know, needs to really like hit into the hill to just get it lands maybe a foot too far. Ball just trickles and trickles and trickles and trickles, goes all the way down. It kind of hangs up on the hill for about two seconds and then goes all the way down the water got to go back across you know instead of replaying the shot goes back ar around the pond hits a chip goes long again it goes back to essentially the same spot so then we got the putter out you know we got one of the greatest chippers i think of our generation chip putting the ball up off that little ridge and immediately as soon as he hits the putt he's stomping after it reaching into his pocket for the coin he's he's just not uh awesome to look at when he's hitting wedges it just has a tough time when the especially you know 15 that's happened now twice in the last you know eight years or so where he cannot figure out the flight of the ball off that down slope and ends up either sucking it back in the water or hitting it long and making a mess of it man yeah it's a randy should have bumped a hybrid maybe oh i like that could have been the play on the on the short grass it's <sighs> it's always bleak when you have like the when you've got like the when the cliches aren't true anymore is is kind of a bleak moment right like there's there's the phil thing about like oh you know you never count that guy out man something something about augusta <laughs> something about the you know the the azaleas and like that was kind of true right until oh yeah until at least like uh you know the maybe this year not quite as much but like i was gonna say it, it, it honestly still might be true you know right? the jordan I, I thing is like you know yeah. Solly was staying forever like oh he's he's the favorite every year and it's like ah no nah, he's just not dude He's not. He, he kind of lulled us into that run where he had five straight years where he could have won the Masters. And then, like, even in, in 21, he finishes fourth. In, in 23 last year, he finishes, you know, fourth, or I think it was third and then fourth. And you're just feeling like, oh, yeah, of course it's always going to work out. I think I even wrote something for ESPN once. It was like, this place will always, like, be fairy dust for him. Like, it's always going to be great. And Rory's always going to be tormented by it. And it turns out, like, maybe they'll both be kind of tormented. Half right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's tough. Randy, any, any speech? thoughts before we move on <laughs> no i mean nothing like nothing fully baked but i i do think hearing you say that kevin it's it's interesting um again would make a fun psychological examination you know a guy who had su such success at augusta he he must he must visualize that success right he he must see himself hitting all the necessary shots because he's done it he, and to, to not be able to do it for whatever reason um, is a frustration, I think, more acute than simply never being able to figure Augusta out, right? And I I don't know. I, I don't know how you navigate that, deal with it. It's I, I don't know where he goes from here. That's so well said because, like, if you think about other, other sports, I mean, maybe I guess I, I'm just thinking about, like, tennis, right? It's always, like, the the best comp for golf and solo pursuits and all this stuff. And, you know, a lot of tennis courts look the same, right? If you can't get your serve in the box or if you can't, you know, I don't exactly. know, Randy, you know, all the, you know, all the terms much better than I am. Like the, that kind of like translates, great. that kind of translates like, <laughs> tennis every, knower, DJ. yeah, yeah. I'd listen to my trap draw ball, no, or DJ ball boy, no, or DJ. Uh, the, uh, I think that there's like, there's something like, different about like going to each tennis court and like eh, everything kind of feels the same maybe you can kind of figure it out anywhere there's only one 12th hole at augusta like that's such mm -hmm. a more visceral yeah just experience right that it's like man i fucking have done it here before and now i can't and i yeah. remember what it felt like to do it here and i know exactly what i need to do and i know how i need to judge this win and i just like can't right now is just 
so much different than than any other sport i feel like remember Deidre, when you were you i think you're telling the story about when he hit the truck in hawaii and he was like wow that isn't that cool like he like that shit always just was expecting him i remember in 15 when he like hit a just a ripper on 11 and it just hit the pin like dead in the middle of the pin maybe it was uh, maybe it was 14 and it just like stopped right there and he's like oh wow that's neat <laughs> like that kind of shit just always happened for a while and then like he dropped Dumbo's feather and it's just like, Oh, well, I, yeah, I have no idea what happened. I can't, I can't fly anymore. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Well, go read KVV's piece. It's really, really good. There was, there's a great scene in there about, um, just your lead, I think with the patrons and kind of like how, how different it used to be like when he's coming through the gallery and how everybody parts like Moses. And now he's kind of like, you know, clumsily trying yeah. to make his way to the first tee and no one sees him coming. It's, it reminds me of Shooter McGavin kind of stepping on the beach ball a little bit. But uh, I'm sure, you know, if, if if nothing else, I'm sure Jordan kept a good good attitude about everything. Oh, yeah, definitely. Unless it was when he blew me off and was like, yeah, no, man, I, I'm good. <laughs> I did I did try to get comment from him, and he was polite about it. He was like, yeah, yeah no, thanks, man. I'm good. <laughs> so... <laughs> No offense. I don't take offense with it. I just you know, I had to ask. So, uh, Kev, any, anything else burning tonight? I know you were kind of, you had a lot of ROM on the brain tonight, too. I did. I, I was, you know, was thinking about just him truly getting livid yesterday. There's some clips of him basically just cursing up a storm every fucking drive, you know, in the in going right like and this him. and that. And I, I was fascinated to watch him. I, I was a kind of like the sadist in me was like, whoa, if he misses the cut, I feel like nothing is sacred like he's got to stick around and watch this shit for two days that's <laughs> like the rom prison of his own making it's just just have to stomp around the grounds and watch other people in his kingdom so i, I guess for his sake i'm at least uh glad he made it but i mean honestly the the ejection by jt was really uh prominent at least he and george can like you know carpool buddy home together in their rvs because that was i mean you're you're seven over through the last four holes and you move the cut line and you I know you guys talked about the shot into 15, but the shot into 18 was almost as brutal. I mean, he knows he's got to make a you know a par to make the cut, and he he dead yanks it over there into the bathroom uh, by the, the trees there, and has to go backwards. That was brutal. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't think there's gonna be a lot of cut in the deck for thousands on the way home uh, between uh, no. the <laughs> between Do those you, two on the jet. <laughs> KVV, I, I saw you uh, in Rom's post round presser they asked him about the conditions and he intimated that he thought they were very close to suspending yeah. play a couple times did did you pick up on that did that surprise you did uh... you know it did surprise me a little bit it's all i were talking about was this like the strongest wind that you've ever seen and i was immediately thought about like saint andrews in 15 where but he pointed out like the ball was moving back then like the, the balls weren't quite moving i did see gary woodland the ball kind of moved and rolled all the way back down the hill and he got to place it so it did feel pretty brutal, but I don't know that it was like it really felt like they were on the verge of stopping it like Rom did. Um, and it's I don't know. I mean, it, it certainly some guys were able to hit shots in it. You know, the true yeah. ballers were able to to step up and and handle it. And, and watching Cam Smith, man, that was fun to actually see him back in the mix yeah. and seeing Colin Morikawa actually like you know grow up and and stop being a little boy lately. That was <laughs> that was fun. So I don't know, man. At the last hour of like implosions were so fun that was just a really that's what i want out of every friday masters is people just shitting their pants or rising to the occasion or like ejecting and jose maria like shaking hands here and there i mean that was that was sweet here here well kev we'll uh we'll let you get back to it thank you for uh for everything tonight go read kvv's piece on no up.com i'm sure we will talk to you tomorrow my man thank you for uh thank you for popping in thank you boys all right, uh, we do. I, I do have word. We got a man warming up in the bullpen. I know he's not <laughs> he's, quite he's ready hot. to go yet. He's not. Oh, he's not hot. Yet. Oh, okay. But we he are. Uh, we're we're gonna pay a bill here real quick. We're gonna shout out our friends at Omni Hotels. Randy Omni Hotels continues to take their golf to another level. They have 13 sought after golf destinations, 28 courses in all, from championship designs by iconic architects like William Flynn. Gil Hance and Bo Welling to multiple short courses, putting courses, and interactive experiences. Uh, a huge unveiling from Gil Hance is actually right around the corner with the debut of Omni La Costa's championship course renovation. I can't Justin, wait to see that. I, you know what? Spoiler alert me and the code man and Casey are going to go check it out in a couple weeks here, just in front of the NCAA Women's and Men's Golf Championships in May. Not only will it be the first time the world will be seeing this course, but for the players too. Then they'll be back in 25 and 26. 
Uh, course will be open for member and resort guest play in June. Add that to your list, Randy. San Diego in June. How's that sound? Hmm. Uh, this just, just adds to the list of tournaments and majors that Omni is hosting across their nationally ranked courses. There is no shortage of exciting golf programming, resort offerings, and distinctive accommodation options when it comes to Omni. Experience it for yourself and book your next golf trip at omnihotels.com slash golf omnihotels.com slash golf omni golf play the possibilities it's all you've seen how hard i'm hitting these these slogans man I'm so you know, proud punch of you, man. the keys punch the keys. i uh I, i'm legitimately psyched that the ncaa championships aren't at Greyhawk anymore i i'm good on desert golf can't wait to see uh gills work i and hopefully the championships will stay there i know they're signed for three years but reading the tea leaves they they might just park it there uh, indefinitely we shall see let's uh you know what we're gonna s switch the agenda up around because I, I think we're gonna want this guy we're gonna try to stretch this guy out neil or uh randy isn't that what everybody's saying you gotta stretch gotta stretch these guys out if we could get three innings out of this guy instead of one like god saves that, the pen i mean the rest we got of the 12 series. in a row after this like that would be great let's let's bring we'll, him in we'll, we'll dfa him we'll dfa him after <laughs> today anyway i love i love this matchup that we got for the next segment uh bringing in the big right hander kind of a switch he, he bats left but he throws righty of course, that is Neil Schuster, the czar, fresh out of, you know, new fatherhood. I don't know the last time you were on the pod. Welcome to the so golf much daddy. perspective. Yeah, look at the music out of him. Champ, champ, it's great to be here. People want to know if the pro can vanquish the big golfer or if old man Scott will be cooking up something special at the champion's dinner next year. <laughs> That's good stuff. Are you writing that while you were while you're in the greeter? Yeah, there? damn right I was. He's a great, uh, he's a creative writing major. Uh, it's great to be here with you, gentlemen. Um, you know, tough day, tough day, uh, working the grill party for, for yeah. Uh, you know, changing diapers, cleaning up, just so much poop, just, just clean so up much everybody's poop, trash, basically. That's did kinda... any citations get issued at the block party? I assume nobody got arrested. At least, what, I mean, you what know, do you have to say about the block party, uh, Randy. When when times get tough, much like you, I also like to uh, consult the good book. And and I went there for some inspiration and some perspective, oh, and I found it in Proverbs uh, 31, <laughs> verses 6 to 7, in the King James Version of, course. of All the Bible, LeBron. right? Uh, yeah. Quote, give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. So you God, know what? We got a bunch of beer by. left over in the coolers. We got a bunch of pool packs, Okay. <laughs> And when you're sad, why don't you just crack a cold one, big man? Okay, I, and I hope Rory Rory does too. Rory, go go grab yourself a cold beer, brother. I think he's still in the range. God. Well, after that, I hope he has a nightcap. Um, dude, electric you know electric strikeout from Neil facing that first batter. That's why they that's why they bring him in. What I'm gonna say, Randy, I'm 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 mad as hell. Honestly, yeah. I'm mad as, I'm mad I, as hell. Good, good. Um, it was a disgrace. I mean. All the words, right? I'm hurt. I'm disgusted. I mean, Roy looked like fucking Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> all right. It, it, like, I kind of wish he would have just gotten blown out to see like Spieth, you know, yeah. or, or JT, like com commit Sopoku or whatever. Just, just, you know, he didn't. He just fell off the wall. It, it was just all day, double miss, a little hang doggy early, but then like the fake Aria Jatanagarn smile on the back nine, which made it even worse of like, no, I'm not, I'm not upset. Him and Harry are yucking it up. Yeah, it sucked, man. Yeah, but you know what it was? <laughs> Last year and the year before, previous block parties, he's had the driver. <laughs> he's had the driver work. And such a good comment. Kevin Quigley interjecting. Deal is not lasting three innings. <laughs> he had the driver working, and he doesn't right now. He's Pitch so the lost. Contact, Neil. Pitch Guys, the he's so lost off the tee right now, and that's his superpower. And without that, the rest of the car just isn't, it's not working. And that sucks. And so, you know what, Randy? I tried to manifest something this week. That was a premature block party call. I put the word out too early. We got a bunch of people we don't know at the party. And yeah, you called the cops. And they're, and you know what? Party's over. So, yeah. 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 Well, the block party became a neighborhood watch problem. And I don't appreciate <laughs> that. All right. You know, I'm a NIMBY. I don't need this shit in my backyard. I anyway. think. The thing about traditions, Neil, is like some years are better than others, man. But you just got to keep sure. the lights on. I, yeah, you know? I'm sure there were some tough mats, some early masters exactly. Exactly. events probably stunk, right? You think they wanted to have the one in November? No. 
Like, that's right. That's that's sometimes right. those are the circumstances, it's man. It's my duty, Randy. I can't help it, <laughs> yeah. all right? And I want to be like, at this point, it's like it's like filing my taxes. I have to. I have to do it. Right? I know. I, right? I, I don't want to get a penalty. Well, you've been up every night for a month, too. Like, I can't even imagine the headspace you're in. Of course, we were I was so party. I was so fucking jacked up <laughs> for that that group. I was like, God, Rory. All we needed from him was a, was what Xander did. Like Xander, I got to give credit Dang. to Xander. Xander grinded Dang his around. nuts off, cool. just, just lingering. Cool, Rory. Just, and he just didn't do it. And right off the first tee, it was like, oh, cool, dump it in the bunker. Sick. <laughs> like just bad, bad golf. Neil, so, it it's on you if you're surprised at this point, though. It, it it is on you if you're surprised. I'm not surprised, but I'm disappointed. And you know what? It's fun for me. I do, truthfully, I do like to root for Rory. I want to be there when he when he does it. And I have I I think he's going to do it. I really do. I think he's got ten years. I think it's going to happen. So you know what? Maybe we'll we'll have a smaller gathering. Maybe not a party <laughs> next year, but you know, I might might crack a cold beer. Uh, well, listen, the big, I did not expect him to get so many outs that fast, but the, the reason we brought him in was I love the matchup with Neil and lingering and loitering. One of sure, his favorite, sure. one of his favorite games ever, a Friday tradition, speaking of traditions, a Friday tradition here on the no laying it up podcast, Neil, we're just going to go quick here. All right. And I, we don't want you to overthink it. The rules of the game are simple. Those who are lingering are of no threat. You know, they're just peacefully hanging out. They're maybe, you know, smoking well, a J with some friends out of the parking lot. They're not not a reason to call the police. But those who are loitering have bad intent. They may be coming in to rob the cashier. They are they have their eyes on the trophy. And uh, we're going to go through and kind of see who's who's who. DJ, I actually had some definitions writ written down. So oh, we'll start perfect. with lingering. Um, you know, but I guess the real definition is not doing stuff. Right, it's kind of a binary thing. Are you doing stuff? Or are you not doing stuff? So the lingers, they're annoying. They're chatty at the register. They're leaving the fridge open for two or three minutes because they can't make a decision about what energy drink they want to get. Sure. They're unprepared with payment. They ask if the price is correct, meaning they're cheap. Uh, and they're just oblivious to the line stacking up behind them. Just get out of the way, okay? Sure. And I, and I have a, a you know a few names on this list. I think Hoygard. First Masters, I think he's lingering. I, sure. I I don't think he's doing things tomorrow. I don't think he's doing things Sunday. I think he's fading down the board. Morikawa, Randy, I was proud of you last night. I know he 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 played good today, but I don't think he's going to win. Cam Young, total fool's gold right now. Don't know what's going on with him. He's not going to win. Matthew Pavon, no thank you. Tommy Fleetwood, sorry, TC, he's not going to win. Now, I have one that's going to be – it, it, this is tough. I'm worried. I'm concerned about Max. I am mm. concerned. I am passionately rooting for Max. But Randy, we are in a, in a place that you and I know well, the edge of uncomfortable. Yes, we and are. That is where learning happens, which is good. That's where we want to be. But we're in kind of a new, a new place here. Long day today. I got to think he's tired. He looked tired talking to Van Pelt and Butler Cabin. So I'm concerned about Max if he's if he's happy. You know, he seems like he's in too good of spirits. Like the the mental game is so dialed that like, you know, he might just he might not be um, like I need him to be a little meaner. That that's kind of what I'm looking for. So mm. I have him. I kind of have him in the lingering category. But I'm God. I'm rooting for him to just take a baseball bat to the window. You know I, what I mean? Like I want him to do something crazy. I got to so, add in here. He's got his. I'm also concerned. He's got a 652 OPS for his fantasy baseball team this week. He's leading every hitting category, <laughs> and his ERA is 6.28 this week. It's not <laughs> not looking great for Max. You may have been focused on some other things. Right? And he also got a minute. Up. He also got a minute 07 on the New York Times mini today. And which, he's got uh, that. He's kudos got that new, for getting that um, in. He's got that new Chipotle sponsorship. He's eating a bunch of burritos. You know, he's getting guardy. Like that's there's the free down. free ad. There he had to get. One I thought that was a there. sick a sick sponsorship. Anyway, Any, uh, anyone else that is lingering right now? No, that was kind of my list. I, so I think I was trying to keep in, are, in the guys that are in the yeah. uh, like under par. Like sure. we could go down the list, but these are these guys are kind of on the first page of the leaderboard. Don't think they're doing anything. So loitering. So that, Hold on, that was that was going to be my question. We're not even worrying about guys at even par or worse, right? Like, I, I mean, we can, but I was trying to keep it tight, right? No, no, I, but I, I mean, what, what's your opinion? Like, does anybody really have a shot at doing anything? Uh, I think I have one guy on there, uh, and I'll start with him. So, loitering, and he's at even par. Loitering is 
doing stuff, right? So we're pacing out in front of the store. You better we're not wearing, say who I think you're going to say. We're oh, wearing pants with way too many pockets. We're cracking tall boys before we pay for them. We're standing next to the register evaluating tobacco selection in silence. We're getting real close to the hot dog and pizza hot bar and smelling the food for an uncomfortably long period of time. We're wearing too many layers when it's hot. Packets. We're biking off, and then we're biking back 10 minutes later. <laughs> Guys, it just kind of circle the block, but they don't seem to go away, okay? The, gr the greatest loiterer ever is the guy from uh, No Country for Old Men. Yes. Just <laughs> call, around. Not, call, call it. it. Uh, yeah. Not saying much. Eerily quiet. So, obviously, Scott, he's, I mean, nothing really needs to be said. Sure. Uh, he's, he's very quiet. He's, he's got a long easy. record. Um, I was torn. I, I have Bryson in the loitering category. I was torn though. I think he's gonna stick around, but I, I think there's a, there's some some holes in the game a little bit. Like I, I see some, he could get pretty squirrely. He got a few squirrely tee shots. Randy, I agree with you. He showed some patience. I'm gonna leave him in the loitering category though because I want him there. The guy I mentioned earlier though, I have Xander in the loitering category for one reason it. only. He's not we gonna win the tournament. Is. What he's gonna do is he's gonna hang out very quietly by the picnic tables over <laughs> around back. He's going to wait. The cops are going to get called for somebody else. And then he's going to sneak in and steal the money out of the register quietly and, and just walk off. And he's going to get a top five. <laughs> and and it's, it's he shouldn't be allowed to do that. It's bullshit. But I would consider that a form of loitering. I would uh, rather he's just not there. Yeah. I don't feel comfortable with him hanging out. He's not going to hurt anybody, but he's going to do something nefarious. So that's why he's in this category. I also have Cam Davis. I got a bad feeling about Cam Davis. He's I'm worried really he's going to ruin some narratives. Uh, he looked really good. And I, I'm just not really into him, and so I'd, I'd, I'd love to see him fade, but um, I don't know. And then Ludwig, the quiet ones are the ones you got to worry about. Ludwig is definitely loitering, played awesome today. Uh, and then Fitzpatrick and Cam Smith. Um, maybe not Fitzpatrick as much because the course won't be as hard on the weekend, but, man, he played – he hung around, like, true to form, and then the mangy Greasy. dog is, is – yeah. you know, he's doing his thing. So I, this was kind of an easy game tonight. The wind kind of did my job for me, kind of just blew all the little skateboarder groms out, you know, out to sea. Wind Cops them. already did a drive-by. All, uh, yeah. all the little boys went home. Blow pig, will it, see ya. <laughs> Rory, sorry, out of here, Humpty Dumpty. Uh, what did that with Jason Day, I had a good name for him. Uh, uh, bird, bird son. That like is a blow good name. pig. Bird, like Jay. Yeah, we'll workshop that offline. <laughs> My, I'm running out of I'm running out of steam here. No, guys. No, 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 go ahead. Mount this visit. is your game to Hold finish. Visit. Yeah, we... God, that one got foul. Holy! Smoke. Oh my God, that one's deep, deep, one deep foul. Twelve ball off the bat, foul. Uh, Neil, hang out for this next segment here because I, I think you're really gonna like this one as well. Uh, this is this is simply titled "Did You See This?" Okay, and this is just. <laughs> Before we before we turn the page on the first two rounds, I just want to circle back on a couple things and just ask you guys, did you see this? So let's just make sure we're all on the same page. And the first one, we mentioned, Cody mentioned Bryson's irons yesterday. You know Cody's subscribing to Bryson's Patreon. You know he's getting all the updates from Bryson and his team. <laughs> I, I wanted to go back and read. This is from a, a story from Adam Shupak. Uh, this is about Bryson's, Bryson's new irons. Quote, <clears throat> Bryson DeChambeau, who opened with the 7 under 65 in the first round of the Masters at Augusta National Golf Club, is playing with a custom set of single length irons made by little known club maker. I want to say it's Avoda. Avoda, Avada. I'm not sure. I'm going to say Avoda. That are made by 3D printing and weren't approved by the USGA until Monday. With no hesitation, DeChambeau inserted them into the bag at the Masters. Here's where it gets good. Avoda is a Hebrew word with multiple meanings, one of which is precision. According to Avoda's website, the company makes two different types of irons. One uh, one length irons, like the clubs DeChambeau was played when he was sponsored by Cobra, and combo length irons. So you can see on the screen here that stamped onto Bryson's wedges is what appears to be the Hebrew word uh, for precision, as well as the Bryson logo, which I did not see coming in a million years. And uh, just, did you guys see this? Got to make sure. Make sure we're all on the same page. Bryson's got a chance tomorrow to do one of the funniest things possible if he hits Max with a shalom on the first tee. Big pair, comfy pairing for Max. We know, we know that. We know that. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't looking up Hebrew words for for the Slack channel. You know, Bryson put putting one on the on the back hopa <laughs> on fourteen. Uh, I, it's, it's incredible. 
Neil, Neil called them the 3D printed Hebrew hammers today, which is <laughs> which is just really good stuff. Again, didn't see that coming. Want to make sure you guys saw that. Number two, uh, VJ Singh made the cut this week wearing hokas. These like <laughs> so very so very sick. colorful running shoes. As a hoka guy myself, you love to see this. VJ seventy two seventy three to make the cut for the twentieth time. That's I unreal. just just making sure you guys that had come across your desk. Next one. Uh, TC, TC had many tweets that we could have put up here. I, my personal favorite quote, uh, Bubba with a six, eight, five start to his back nine, otherwise known as a Samoa, uh, which I believe six, eight, five is the area code for American Samoa. Uh, <laughs> just wanted to make sure I didn't know that before this week. I, <laughs> I've never seen Bubba go six, eight, five before. Just really, really good stuff. I had to admit, I was I was afraid to ask what that was in reference to in our internal Slack. I did, I did confirm on that one. Uh, okay, number four. Saul, you mentioned this yesterday. Greg Norman out at Augusta. Just an incredible photo. I believe Dylan DeChair posted this one is how it originally came across my desk. TC said he looked like Genghis Khan leading just a horde, a horde of conquerors out around Augusta. And I do want to say, I think this outfit is is fire. I think the tight pants, the white Good. shirt, the white, the white safari hat. I've just give it all to me. I think it looks awesome. I've, I've never had any problem with with Greg's outfits. You go back and watch the old Masters clips. It's it's fire. It's it's fuego at, at all times. Just got to say, it is not slippery enough out here to be wearing golf shoes. I I get it. Yesterday, like you're a little worried. Maybe it was going to be a monsoon. There were no walking issues amongst anyone out there. He does not need to be wearing golf shoes. Uh, okay, next one. Uh, very quick, but Brian Harmon went 34 47. Never seen a major champion quite do a reigning major champion hang up a 47 on, on a back nine. Just thought you guys should know. Don't really have a lot to add there. Uh, number six, I know this is a controversial one. I, I issued a statement this morning. What are you doing? Jason Day's vest. I'm don't, in. Yeah, don't no, don't do that. No, I think it's this. sweet. Stop. I think this Stop. is sweet. No. Stop I pandering. I think you guys are on the wrong side of history. Yes. No. Was he, was thing. it true that he was asked not to wear it, or did he just take it off? No, I think that was a lie. I think it just. Do you up. like? Do you like the the like the the vest, the sweater vest, or do you like the design on it, or both? Uh both. I think this is the one. I I you know I'm not out on all Malbon across the board. I'm out on the pants. I think the pants look quite silly on Jason Day. And I'm out on this outfit, like, with the fucking three logos on his hat as yeah, well. It's, like, <laughs> it's not cool. But this has, like, a... I think we're going to look back on this one fondly. I think this I think this looks cool. <laughs> I think, I'm, I'm in on this. I, Deej, I, I can't get there with you. I do like the sweater vest. I just think that the design is stupid. Like, they're, they're, the idea is close. It's closer than... I, I'm kind of, like, in the middle here. But, like... I Malibu think golf TC, championship is just stupid. If TC was wearing this and he's like, oh, I got this heat from Callaway, Japan, we'd be like, that's fucking sick. I think it's I think it's very much in that. Yeah, but it probably have vein. Japanese characters and it would and like it be interesting. It wouldn't be number three, one, three. Like this is all meaningless. Like none of this. This is all like I'm guessing all of that is made up to look cool. That's and why it, it would sucks. fit. It would fit TC. That's an important part as well. Of course. Of course. Listen, I don't know. I'm 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 in on it. I'm in on it. I don't know. I don't know what else to add. Clearly, you guys feel differently, but I'm I'm glad to get that off my chest. Number seven, uh, Sergio's fashion bounce back. Uh, <laughs> Solly, I think one of the worst takes maybe in Masters history yesterday nope. was you riding for the green and yellow sandwich artist yeah. fanatics that look that Jason Day had. This look today with the red pants and the white shirt is like that's what it's about. He looks like an F one team principal rolling out for you know to watch go go watch see the boys out on pit row I, this is this is good good stuff i'm i'm getting in touch with the uh, the 2012 version of me that that loved yesterday's <laughs> outfit and also would have loved this one right i was doing a lot of bold colors they weren't necessarily vibing i think, I think we could we could reach across the aisle on that is okay. yes Sorry, that's i was most... gonna say i swear i've seen you in this exact pan of yeah, blue this. though it, uh, like yeah. this brightness of blue though but the point was, I need these teams doing weird shit like this. It's got to be fun and entertaining. You cannot be serious. We cannot. We're not going to be taking you seriously. You need to be doing outrageous shit like this. Here, here, uh, Jordan. We're going to skip number eight. We're going to come. We're going to save number eight for last, and uh, we're going to go right to number nine, which is, of course, probably the moment of the day, honestly. Uh, which is Bryson moving the crosswalk sign on thirteen. <laughs> Randy, can, I believe you first. This came across my desk first uh, from you. What was your first impression here? Uh, just absolute Wonder. 
amazement yeah wonder i mean when we were talking yesterday about you know science versus religion i didn't have science going full religion here passion of the christ uh is it there's a green it, jacket in the background is it Billy I, and, and that's what i yeah that's my well, favorite part sally is the green jacket just, huh well yeah if, if you look everybody's you, you got one green jacket that's like hmm that's you know he's just thinking in in his head mm, no that's not we we can't have that I think this all factors into like what I'm hoping for is kind of a, a self-aware, you know, faux humility, Bryson. Like, you know what, man? I just I didn't used to get it, but now I'm like, I'm all about personal responsibility. And you no, 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 please don't bother yourself. Please let me let me move this side. I think no, 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 I don't I don't need anything from you guys. And that's like <laughs> that's that's what I'm here for. I think that that down that road leads leads really good stuff. Shout out to West Stewart. <laughs> the passion, passion of the, of the crusher. Passion of the crank. God, didn't have, I should have that on the top of my mind. Good. Passion you of know. the crusher. A lot <laughs> of like Bryson Falls for the third time type of type of Well, I mean, he's got the Hebrew hammers. You know who else is a carpenter? <laughs> exactly. Think, exactly. man. Unbelievable. Exactly. exactly right. Uh saw so anything else to add on this one? No. I just I sprinted to go get as many screenshots as I could as soon as I saw it. Uh well, number 10 I'm going to I'm going to let you take this one Solly. This is oh uh this is our our guy ZJ uh make, <laughs> makes a triple on number 12 can be seen like pretty clearly like l here's what I'll say Pre presented without comment looking in the direction of the patrons who are cheering for him making a triple can saying I, fuck can, off Can I can I get the sequence here this is yeah. the important sequence here he, he puts for double bogey and misses it like a little bit on the low side taps it in and doesn't say anything, doesn't make any noise, but there's always that delay from 12 green back to the patrons on the other side. A bunch of patrons that are just there hanging out, you know, want to clap for golfers, uh, applaud as EJ taps in for triple, but this is all takes a second, right? It's not like he holds this and then just yells it, right? So the applause comes a little late. He looks up in the directions of the patrons and goes, oh, fuck off. <laughs> it wasn't like he was like looking at the hole saying, fuck off, like mad at himself. It was directed at the patrons to say, oh, fuck off after they clap for him to make triple bogey. And after the after the round, he, of course, tried to deny it. He said it was laughable. Um, he's like, I, I, you know, I'm not going to deny I said anything, especially if it's on camera and did, took zero responsibility for telling the patrons to fuck off. It's unmistakable. It's undeniable. I won't accept any other explanation. That that's exactly what he did. Go back and watch it on the Amen Corner cam if they haven't scrubbed it, which I have no problem with him doing, by the way. I was gonna say he should have just it. owned it. Yeah. He should have been like, "Yeah, I was frustrated. I thought they were yeah. clapping in jest. I yeah. I said what I said." I think no, anybody it, anybody would have said that in the yeah. same in the same position. No one's following ZJ's hole close enough to know that that was tri for triple bogey. All right, <laughs> and to miss the cut too, I think, which is tough. Uh, all right, we've arrived at the main event. This is uh, this comes to us. I don't know if any of you have listened to this yet. This was an Instagram DM that I got from a listener named Charles Van Kirk. As you'll remember on the show last night, I was petrified to do the uh, high noon ads read uh, to, to keep saying the term big cans over and over again. I was and I made a joke like somebody's going to isolate this audio and uh, they're going to they're going to just really cancel me. And uh, that's exactly what our friend Charles Van Kirk did. So, Jordan, if you're if you're ready, please, this is this is the big cans remix. I haven't heard this. Big cans, big cans, big cans, big cans. <laughs> Possibly some Freudian stuff going on. Large. Large. My name is. 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 God, that's <laughs> yeah. Oh, I did not see that coming. Round of applause Fantastic. for Hassan, for our guy Charles. Uh, <laughs> I think we gotta send that to our friends at High Noon. I think we gotta. That's that is the ad read. Next time. We gotta pick Cans ad read. That's uh, that's what it is. We, like, we have to throw summer. it in maybe as intro music for a few uh, the, for the <laughs> weekend episodes. We might we might need to. That got me. It. I think I saw the third leg. I was not ready for that part. Let's <laughs> see. I don't know, Charles. I don't know if you got. I don't know if you got a SoundCloud. People should go. <laughs> should go yeah, what check should we out. promote for? Yeah, you, I mean, yeah. please. You gotta you gotta get something out of that. Oh. Thank you very much. Uh, Yes. All right, guys. That's about all I got on the agenda. The last last thing is, uh, you know, we did unveil some menus last night. Mm -hmm. If you missed this, 
we uh, we did again. This kind of stems from TC just being apoplectic about some of the mock menus that were going around, and he was just furious that everybody was just picking steak and potatoes, and like this is bullshit. Everybody's just picking these low rent down market steakhouse menus this is bullshit and uh so we've been asking everybody to come up with their own menus i shared mine last night cody shared his last night and uh, i believe tonight we've got randy and the czar the strap boys sharing their menus let's uh let's start with randy jordan let's let's put randy's up first randy please walk us that's through that's this. mine thank, you for, thank you for having us also uh of course of course welcome guys um i i think it's important to oh my god Give everybody a part of my heritage to, to, to bring where <laughs> I'm from records. to all of you. So, in honor of that, uh, we our app is the easiest thing to see coming ever. <laughs> I know, I know. Our appetizer is a nice little bowl of oyster crackers. Uh, for our main course, we have an authentic, an authentic Cincinnati chili that can be prepared in a three, four, or five way format. Um, this consists of a plate of noodles with chili cheese, and then your choice of beans and or onions. This is courtesy of Skyline Chili Parlor, Cincinnati, Ohio, um, preferably the, the Oakley location. And then for dessert, we have, we have, uh, your choice of a scoop of Grater's ice cream, world famous Grater's ice cream in mint, black raspberry, or double chocolate chip. Gentlemen, thank you for being here tonight. <laughs> and it's fantastic. Enjoy. I will That's say that our our designer, uh, the Thumb God, he he sent this to me. He, Randy wanted to say served in honor of a uh, Big Dick Daddy from Cincinnati. <laughs> so very very classy dinner that that our champion is <laughs> putting Randy, out. That or the Thumb God that, wanted to say that. Uh, Randy did. I was I just it. trying to give the Thumb God a laugh. You know, you got to give people a laugh every now and again. I didn't think that was going to be public. All right, Neil, no jokes in yours. I loved it, Randy. It made me laugh. I'm sure. What do we got? (laughs) Um, All right. So kind of caught me off guard in between diaper changes, but I wanted to get something in here. (laughs) Listen, man, I am so into bagels living in Brooklyn. (laughs) So I'm going in. I want to make everything bagel bites. I don't even know if they make those, but I I want the chef to prepare them. (laughs) And I want to throw some some uh, some locks, some cream cheese and some some vegetable cream cheese and some locks on top of that. Nice little finger food that you can pass around. Who doesn't like bagel bites? Honestly, if, if you don't like bagel bites, you can get the fuck out of here. Sure. Uh, and then I'd love to get some just some basic marinated shrimp with some just a Cajun marinade. I don't know. Let the chef do his thing with that. Uh, first course, we're going wedge salad, keeping it simple. Bacon, gotcha. blue cheese, crumble, fresh tomatoes served with oven, fresh garlic bread. And then guess what we're doing for a main course? Family style, baby. Let's go. We're going Italian, huh? Well, you're here, your family. And I'm inviting Mikey to Rico. Let's go. We're going sausage and pepper pasta. My <laughs> father-in-law makes the best sausage and pepper pasta. I love it. It would probably be my death row meal uh, if it wasn't Peggy Schuster's meatloaf. Uh, but I'm going penne noodles, red pepper flakes. We got to spice it up and grated Parmesan cheese. Uh, and then let's get some sliced garden tomatoes and burrata cheese in there. And then for dessert, my mom always made me this cake for my birthday. It's called Stacy's chocolate chip cake. It's a nice, like moist, like yellow bunt cake. And then you just mm. pair it with some vanilla bean ice cream. Sure. It would be served in honor of Mr. Icarito. Mm. Neil, are oh. there going to be cold beers at this dinner? Uh, yes. Uh, cold domestics. Okay. Um, okay. We're not going to. We're not going to linger on it too long, but that's I, right. We I got some. I, I don't know who told you that uh, Miller was a Chicago company, but <laughs> oh no, uh, that was the, here. That's, that would... that's the thumb god. I didn't. I didn't okay. put that in. That's there. disgusting. There's a lot of people in my neck of the woods that have a lot to say about that. Uh, guys, great stuff. I, I would love to be to partake in either of these meals. Really, really, really good stuff. Uh, Similar to last night, we we KV and I both left very hungry. Um, we we did a uh, we got in touch with a, a, a tradition, a 1997 tradition. We hit the Arby's on Washington Road, just like Tiger Woods did after every round of the 1997 Masters. Uh, service was not fast, but uh, that's what we did last night. You listen to uh, oh God, what was it? Was it the train? Yeah, that's yeah, we'll, that's that's for a later date. We'll Your song? going down Magnolia Lane to come on ride the train. Hell yeah! Uh, well, guys, that's all I got for this for this Friday show. Awesome thank you, show. thank awesome. you all very much for for coming in. I'm gonna I don't even know if they know I'm gonna pull them up, but I'm bringing in Cody. Hey, 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 Cody's <laughs> back from the dance. Jordan's Jordan's in here. What's Great up, job, Jordan? Running the ones and twos. Uh, Cody, what was the highlight, man? What was the highlight of the dance? I am so hyped up on uh, jelly bellies and uh, pink cupcakes right now. I don't I don't know what to do with myself, but obviously they're surprisingly uh, 
big cans was not played but there was a couple <laughs> other remixes that were so far like over the line for 10 year olds and under i was like oh okay uh it was it was interesting a lot of taylor i knew that was gonna happen of course. um of course. i mean they played stanky leg i didn't <laughs> see that one coming uh it, it, a lot of uh what was it got a waddle waddle wobble with sure. it, wobble with it yeah oh yeah you know, yeah, yeah. Or it's chicken dance. You got to get the people YMCA twice, you know, mm. playing the hits. But it was the a girls have fun. fun. Yeah, so much. I actually took uh surprise. I, I ended up uh, taking all three. That was a surprise to me oh, as wow. well when uh, we were starting to get dressed. So uh, mama kind of snuck that one in. Are, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mom, Mama had a great night. Yeah, She's chilling on the couch still. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to pop in. I got to do export and stuff. <laughs> and uh, she's like, yeah, cool. I'm like halfway through my show. So. Fuck off anyway. <laughs> uh, guys, well, guys uh, amazing menus, though. I would partake. Uh, uh, you know, I'm usually one that just shows up late anyway. I'm like, oh, the main course isn't here yet, but that's cool. Uh, and in Thumb God's defense, I did look up. For some reason, Miller Lite is listed as wow. being brewed in Chicago, Illinois. Wow, Deej. Wow. Get with your wow. boys. Get with wow. your squad. We'll take that off. We'll this is your king? Uh I would, I, be drinking, I would be drinking high noon either way, Neil, mm. no matter what you were serving. Thank you to them for their support of the live show. Thank you to Mizuho. Thank you to Omni. Thank you to Jordan and Cody. Thank you to all Jordan, of you. Jordan, you killed it. Neil, hit him Falcon with it. On. Thank you. Tell him to smash. Tell him to smash some oh, buttons. Yeah, There's like 7,000 people watching. Welcome. Yeah. Thanks for coming to the channel. Can we play him out with big cans, please? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, hit the thumb. That helps people find the video. Hit the subscribe button. Big cans. Thank big cans. Big cans. Big cans. You got it out of control. Awesome. See everybody tomorrow night.